worse. To start a play made up of kings and cardinals in speaking costumes, and in twins with embroidered mouths, with me. You see, if a king or a cardinal had done the prologue, he'd have had the right materials. And an intellectual could have shown enough majestic meanings, colored propositions, and finely woven liturgical stuff to dress up the House of Lords. <laughs> but this? Is this a costume? Does this say anything? You know, all it really is is just a bit of material to introduce old Adam to the common man. <laughs> Matthew, the household steward of Sir Thomas More. They're just company to dinner. Okay, so he's a common man. A 16th century butler. Okay. The 16th century is the century of the common man, just like every other century. And that's my problem. Thomas Moore. The wine, please, Matthew. It's there, Sir Thomas. Is it good? Bless you, sir. I don't know. Bless you, too. <laughs> <laughs> but every man has his price. No, no, no. Master Richard, rich. Yes, and money, too. No, no, no. Pleasure. Idols, women, bricks, and water. There's always something. Childish. In suffering, certainly. By a man with suffering. Impose suffering and offer him escape. Oh, for a moment I thought you were being profound. Good evening, Matthew. No, no, not a bit profound. It then becomes a fairly practical question of how to make him suffer sufficiently. And who was it advised you to read Signor Machiavelli? Oh, oh. <laughs> no. Um. Who? Master Cromwell? Oh. He's a very able man. And so he is. <coughs> yes, I say he's very able. And he'll do something for me, he says. I didn't know you knew him. Okay. Pardon me, Sir Thomas Moore. But how much do you know about me? Whatever you've let me know. I've let you know everything. Richard, you should go back to the page. Well, not used. Do you know how much I have to show for seven months' work? Work. Work. Waiting's work when you wait as I wait. Hard. For seven months, that's two hundred days, I have to show the indifference of the Cardinal's outer dormant, the acquaintance of the Cardinal's inner dormant, and the Cardinal's gentleman's hand in my chest. Oh, and also one half of a good morning delivered at fifty paces by the Duke of Norfolk. Doubtless he mistook me for someone. He was very affable at dinner. Oh, everyone's affable here. Also, the friendship of Sir Thomas More. Or should I say acquaintance? Say friendship. Well, there. Friend of Sir Thomas More's and still no office? There must be something wrong with him. I thought we said French. The Dean of St. Paul's offers you a post. The house, a servant, and fifty pounds a year. Well, what post? At the new school. A teacher? A man should go where it won't be tempted. Look, see this? Look. Beautiful. Italian. If you want it. Why? No joke. Keep it. Or sell it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, of course. Yes. But you'll sell it, won't you? I suppose I will. And buy what? Some decent clothes. Ah. Uh, I want a gown like yours. You'll get several gowns for that, I should think. It was given to me this morning this morning by some woman. Now she's put a claim to the court of requests. It's a bride, Richard. So you give it away. Of course. Yes. To me. Oh, I'm not going to use it. If you need it. Unless, of course, you think it's contaminated. Oh, oh, no, no. I'll risk it. <laughs> but look, Richard, in office they offer you all sorts of things. I was once offered a whole village. A manor house, a mill, I don't know what else. A coat of arms, I shouldn't be surprised. Now, why not be a teacher? You'd be a fine teacher, perhaps even a great one. But if I was, who would know it? You, your pupils, your friends, God. Oh, well, a bad public, that. Oh, and a quiet life. You say that. Richard, I was commanded to office. It was inflicted on me. Can't you believe that? It's hard. Be a teacher. It was magnificent. <laughs> I tell you, he's stooped from the clouds. Alas! Here. Lady Alice, my 
I tell you, he stooped. He did it. That's what he did. He couldn't. He does. It's not possible. More often. Never. Well, fast and all. Come down here. Uh, Lady Margaret. Well, my master's daughter. Lovely. Really lovely. <laughs> and you get about your business. We'll settle this, my lord. We'll put it to Thomas. Thomas, no father can stoop from a cloud, could it? I don't know, my dear. Sounds unlikely, but I have seen falcons do some very splendid things. But how could he see from a cloud? He couldn't see where he was going. Ah, that's what ignorance is. A real falcon doesn't care where he's going. Hmm. Like that. Anyway, I'm talking to me. Plus the very first cast of the day. The sun was behind us, and from side to side, with the roof of the tent, it was a solid mist. Oh, Miss. Well, Mr. Cloud, isn't it? Oh, it's the opinion of Aristotle that mists are an exhalation of the earth. He stooped of... 500 feet. Like that. <laughs> like an act of God, isn't he, Domax? He's tremendous. Tremendous. Did you kill the heron? Oh, the heron was playing. He was a royal stoop. If you could ride us, I'd show you. I can ride, my lord. No, no, you'll make yourself ill. And I'll bet 25. No, 30 shillings I'll see no cloud and stoop from the cloud. Ha! Done! Alice, you can't ride with them. My word, Thomas, remember who you are. And I sit in my... No, indeed. You've just lost 30 shillings. There are such birds, I think. And the heron got the loose chicks, Meg, so everything was satisfactory. Yes. What was that of Aristotle's Oh, nothing, Sir Thomas. It was... It was out of place. Now if I want to do some on myself, I'm not practical. Great philosopher, of course, wonderful mind. Exactly, Your Grace. Huh? Uh, Master Rich is newly converted to the doctrines of a mucky fellow. Oh, no. Oh, I'm the Italian. Nasty book from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's very practical, Your Grace. You read it? Amazing girl, Thomas. But where are you going to find a husband for her? Very good. The doctrines of Machiavelli have been lar largely mistaken, I think. Indeed, properly apprehended, he has no doctrine. And Master Cromwell has the sense of it, I think, when he says that. You know Cromwell. Slightly, Your Grace. The Cardinal's secretary. Never can it be the Cardinal's. It, it's impossible. Not possible. It's a fact. When, Howard? Two, three days? A very son. Well, the Cardinal's a butcher's son, isn't he? It'll be up quick and down quick with Master Homer. Did you know about this? No. Do you like Master Homer, Master Rich? He's the only man in London if he does. I think I do, Lady Alice. <clears throat> Good. Well. You don't need my help, then. Oh, no. No, Sir Thomas. If only you knew how much, much I'd rather yours than his. Talk of the Cardinal's secretary, the Cardinal appears. He wants me. Now. At this time of night. The King's business. The Queen's business. More than likely, Alice. More than likely. <clears throat> What's the time? Eleven o'clock, sir. Is there a boat? Later, sir. You'll excuse me, Richard? Mr. Nurse? Some say 
that's good, some say that's bad. But I say he can't help himself. That's bad, because someday, somebody's going to ask him for something he wants to keep. And he'll be out of practice. But there must be something he wants to keep. I mean, that's only common sense. Half past one, where have you been? Oh. One o'clock, Gilbert. I have another job. Yeah. Since you seem so finely opposed to the dispatch from the room, I thought you'd like to look it over. Yeah. Thank you, Your Grace. Before it goes. Your Grace is very kind. Like your 
so. Boat? Here, sir. Boatman? Yes, sir. Take me home. Just going home myself, sir. Oh. Well, then find me another boat. <laughs> That's all right, sir. I expect you'll make it worth my while, sir. Boatman, have you a, a, a license? Yes, sir, yes. I've got a license. Then you know that the fares are fixed. Why, it's Sir Thomas. Good evening, Master Cromwell. You work very late. Oh, I'm a basic cart. Oh, yes, you are to be felicitated. Congratulations, Master Secretary. Yes, if it is felicitous to be busy at night. It is. Felicitations, then. You have just left him, I think. Yes, I have. You left him in his laughing mood? Uh, on the whole, I would say... No. No, not that. Oh, well, sorry. I am, by the way, Sir Thomas, one of your multitudinous admirers. But we have any half of me to trust. Come in hand, they say, sir. Do the. Where's your boat? Just along the wharf, sir. Sir Thomas Moore! Senor Chacui! <laughs> you are very late, Excellency. So is the Cardinal, Sir Thomas. He sleeps very little. You have just left him, I think. You are correctly informed, as always. I will not ask you the subject of your conversation. <laughs> uh, no, of course not. Sir Thomas. I will be plain with you. Plain, that is, so far as the diplomatic decencies permit. My master Charles, the King of Spain. My master Charles, the King of Spain, feels himself directly concerned in anything concerning his blood relations. He would feel himself insulted by any insult offered to his mother's sister. I refer, of course, to Queen Catherine. The King of Spain would feel himself insulted by any insult offered to his mother's sister. This feeling would be natural. Sir Thomas, may I ask if you and the Cardinal Prince how shall I say, amicably? Amicably? Yes. In agreement? Amicably. Ah, say no more, Sir Thomas. I I hope, hope you do, Excellency. You are a good man. I don't see how you infer that from what I told you. A nod is as good as a wink to a blind horse. I understand. <laughs> you are a good man. You don't need your stories. Spirit so sweet. Some people think boats stay afloat on their own, sir. But they don't. They cost money. <laughs> Take a girl, sir. You may not believe me, but for a little skip like mine, it's a penny a fathom. And with a young wife, sir, as you know. I'll pay you what I always pay. The river looks very black tonight. They say it's silting up, is that so? Not along the middle, sir. There's a channel there getting deeper all the time. Hmm. How is your wife? Oh, she's losing for shape, sir. Losing fast. Oh, well, that's so real. Really, yes, sir, that's fine. Well, take me home. That I will, sir. Richmond to Chelsea, and you have a penny. Chelsea to Richmond, and you have a penny. From Richmond to Chelsea, it's quite a quiet float downstream. Chelsea to Richmond, it's a hard pull upstream. And it's a penny half penny either way. Whoever makes the regulations doesn't row a boat. <laughs> to marry me. 
Well, he can't marry you. <laughs> sir, I've been called to the bar. Oh, congratulations, Rover. My family may not be living in the palace, sir, but in the city. The Moors were advocates, uh, that is, the Rovers were advocates. When the Moors were so sort of cute. There's nothing wrong with your family. There's nothing wrong with your fortune. And there's nothing wrong with you. Except that you need a flaw. I can buy a flaw, sir. Rover, the answer is no. And will be no, so long as you're a heretic. That's what I don't like to talk. No, it's not a likable word. It's not a likable thing. The church is heretical. Dr. Luther is that to my satisfaction. Luther is an excommunicate. From a heretic church. Church? It's a shop. Forgiveness by the floor. Open job lots in Germany. And the horses. The horses? <laughs> oh, half England buzzing with that. Half England? The ends of court may be buzzing. England doesn't buzz so easily. It will. Is that a pope? A cardinal? The church? Really any Christ. Look what I know I'll say. You've no sense of the place. He's no sense of the time. Okay. <laughs> Listen, Roper. <Listen, laughs> Two years ago, you were a passionate churchman. Now you are a passionate Luther. We can only pray that when your head's finished spinning, you're facing the right way. Oh, one more of us. Is your horse here? No, sir, I won't. I'll take a horse from the stables and get on. Go along. <coughs> May I come again? Yes, soon. Good night, sir. He's a heretic, man. That's absolute. Nice boy. Terribly strong principles, though. I thought I told you to go to bed. Yes, why? Because I intended you to go to bed. You're very pensive. You're very pleasant. Did the cardinal talk about the divorce? You know, I think we've gone, been going about this business with Rover a long way. It's no good our Father. Wrong. Old Rover was just the same. Now that I think he's going with the current, and he'll turn around and start swimming in the opposite direction. <laughs> what we want is a really substantial attack on the church. Well, we're going to get it, aren't we? I'll not have you talk treason, Ben. And I'll not have you repeat lawyers' gossip. I'm a lawyer myself, I know what it's worth. <laughs> oh, for now look what you've done. Young broker! I just saw young broker on my horse! Can we bring it back? It's better to see Mark. Why don't you beat that girl, Mother? No. No, she's full of education. And it's a delicate commodity. Men want the petition. Oh, it's there now. Think what it cost. Mother, what was that? I'm sorry you're awake, did you? I wasn't sleeping very deeply. What did Horsey want? <clears throat> and the young broker asked me for fun. What impudence! Yes, wasn't it? Oh, Fox, what did he want, Thomas? He wanted me to read a dispatch. Was that all? Latin dispatch. So, you don't want to talk about her? No. Uh, he's also speaking to you as Chancellor before he left. He's a dangerous friend. Wolsey's Chancellor, God help him. He is a vacancy to be necessary before I put the issues. I don't want this. Bring it. Great Benedict holds the head just the same as commoners. That's dangerous. Level in the palace. Beware of the tower. Bring it. If Wolsey fell, the splash would swamp a few small boats like ours. There will be no new chancellors while Wolsey lives. Why don't we follow tradition in ascribing Wolsey's death to a broken heart, or accept Professor Larkin's less feeling diagnosis of pulmonary pneumonia? Its effective cause was the king's displeasure. He died at Leicester on the 29th of November, 1530, while on his way to the Tower under charge of high treason. England's next Lord Chancellor was Sir Thomas More, a scholar and, by popular repute, a saint. His scholarship is, well, it's supported by his writings, but saintliness is a quality less easy to establish.